with y'all this week. Um, before the teaching, I'll share a little bit more, but um, I'm a grandma three times over, so very exciting. But I, I missed y'all last week. Um, but anyway, I will share more. But I am up here to introduce a dear friend, a, one of our leaders here at CBS, and an incredibly talented artist and talented in many other ways. But this is our Jamie Bomansky, and she is going to share about her painting. So I'm so excited. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, dear one. Thank you, thank you. Okay. I can't see all that. I can see this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you. My voice will calm down in about 60 seconds. Give it a minute. <laughs> um, Nisi texted me this summer asking me to pray about doing another painting for this year's study, and I said I would. And so I texted, we texted back and forth, and I was like, I think I can do that. And so she called me. And um, she explained to me much as what she explained to you guys that first time we were together. Um, she talked about uh, her husband's diagnosis. She talked about grandbabies and health concerns and, and a whole host of other things. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, it's really just an honor to be invited into that space when you know someone is working with the Holy Spirit to prepare a study. And she was delving deep and... Um, she was explaining all the things we talked about the Israelites last year and last year's study, and she said, she said, what we need is revival. And she's like, that's it. That's going to be our word, revive. Go with it. <laughs> and I was like, cool. Uh, revive. To regain life, consciousness, or strength, to resuscitate, bring back to life. Great word. <laughs> How do you paint it? What does that look like? <clears throat> and I ask my kids, you know, I always kind of, when I start the ground rule, just get going on things. I'm like, what do you think about when you hear the word revive? And two of my kids who were sitting at the dinner table, like simultaneously went clear, thunk, like you do on the, in the, anyways. And I was like, well, I can't paint that. So. Um, so I really will confess that this canvas, this painting was a challenge to me from the very, very beginning in the most absurd way. Um, I went to Michael's, I bought my canvas, I got it back to my easel, and I knew it was wrong. I knew the canvas was wrong. I had to go back to Michael's, excuse me, and buy a bigger canvas. It, had, it was pushing back and I hadn't even put a dot of paint on the silly thing. I was like, oh, this is, is going to go well for me, okay? And so I always, I kind of have a system that I do every time I start a new painting, and I got my Sharpie out, and I wrote our verse, our theme verse, just all over it, and um, our theme verse this year, as a reminder, is Psalm 85, 6. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? And I said it in the middle of my workspace, <clears throat> where I had to stare at it, look at it, walk by it, be annoyed by it, <clears throat> and, I, and I'm praying, and I start praying, and I pray, and I pray, and I pray some more, I'm reminding the Holy Spirit I have a deadline, <laughs> keep praying, um, and so I think I shared with you guys last year that most of what I see for paintings is spiritual paintings, um, specific to scripture, it comes to me when I'm asleep and dreaming, or at least that's how it feels to me, it's kind of, it, I don't know. And um, it took me a really long time, I mean, probably like a decade before I'd even share that, because it feels a little like, woo-hoo, to talk about. <clears throat> and I don't think there's anything special about me. I don't think I have the gift of prophecy. But I am convinced, really, that God is just saying, oh, good, she's finally still enough to listen. <laughs> so it, 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 that's how it started coming to me. The picture started coming to me. And what kept coming to me was Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Can they be revived? Bones. That was the picture I was given. <laughs> bones. Well, bones are great but not for the, a painting to stare at, you know. So in rebellion, I painted the entire canvas green. I like green, it's my favorite color. Green represents life. Painted the whole thing green, nothing. I was, it was just bones. It was only bones, it was the only thing that was coming to mind. So 
I started painting bones. And you can see, if you'll look up here later, or there's bones down here. There's like a skull here, and there's a rib cage over here. I mean, this, this was like a very large pile of bones. I've actually painted over um, a lot of them. My son, Brayden, actually walked into my studio while I was painting. He was like, man, CBS is going dark this year. <laughs> and it was just awful. It took me forever. It was like heavy, the colors were dull, it was not beautiful. And I just, I was just, I just kept praying, I, God, how are you gonna revive this? So I started calling it the death canvas. For about a week, I just couldn't even, I couldn't even touch it. I, I had painted it all green in rebellion. I had a pile of bones that were terrible. Um, and so I had been reading Ruth in 1 Samuel, and I thought, oh, Ruth, wheat, wheat is beautiful. I'll paint wheat all over the bones. <laughs> and no, I just, knew that I, I just knew it wasn't right yet. So I kept reading and I kept praying. When I was in the fourth grade, I had to memorize Hannah's prayer. Shout out to Mary Rose Rosenbaum for making me do that. Um, and it wasn't until I was rereading it for this canvas that the Lord highlighted one specific verse from this prayer. 1 Samuel 2, 6 says, The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave, and he raises up, and that was it. I wrote the entire prayer all over those bones about four times, just kept writing the prayer over and over all these dead bones. I knew that the painting was supposed to be living water, and I knew that it was going to have lavender. And again, that's just all chalked up to the Holy Spirit, pictures I had been shown, but I had no idea what the main subject was going to be. All I had was how is this death going to be turned into life? What was going to revive it? I should mention, this is about the first time that Nisi texted me, how's the painting going? Can I see a picture? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so then I Googled the word bitter. And I'm not sure still if it was because of how I was feeling about this silly painting or if it was because I was reading about Naomi at the time. Um, but as you know, when you Google stuff, Lots of things come up. And I kind of was just scrolling through, but what caught my eye was a picture of a lavender flower. Bitter root. Bitter root is a small perennial plant that grows best in areas found in low and mid-range elevations. You can often spot bitter root growing in grasslands, bushlands, and forest. Bitter root will thrive in rocky or gravel-like dry soil, as the plant is known for its ability to regenerate and revive itself even when the root system is seemingly dry and dead, it comes to life. Well, cue the tears. That was it. This was the Ruach. This was what God was going to breathe in. I actually have Ruach painted right here. It's kind of blends in. It's in Hebrew. Um, that was it. An extra just little tidbit about root, uh, bitter root that is beautiful. It was called black medicine by Native Americans, and it was renowned for its awful bitter taste, but it's still known for its heart health properties. And some of the things that are really hard to swallow and bitter, man, that's what refines us and makes our heart well. God is so faithful, y'all. Once I had seen these flowers, I knew that was it. I couldn't get them on the campus fast enough. I was kind of manic. I was like, oh, you know, just painting it really, really fast to get them on there. And all the pieces kind of finally came together. The life that was to be painted over the death. The <clears throat> bitter root represented Mara changing back to Naomi. Hannah's womb being brought to life. Ruth's faithfulness being rewarded by a whole new life through whom the Lord would bring our Savior. God providing Samuel and then David in a time of spiritual drought. Our God is in the business of taking things that look dead, hopeless, lifeless to us and creating life. I hope that when you look at this painting, you'll be reminded that nothing is completely lost to God. We know, for the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord works on the heart. Those children that are lost those relationships that are like a wasteland, those giants that are focused on causing us harm, those places where we only see death, our God will breathe Ruach, the rushing breath of life, over them, and we will be revived. Let me share one last verse, because this is where we started, where God started with me in Ezekiel with those bones. <clears throat> this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. 
When I open the graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle in your own land and then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. I have done it, declares the Lord. Thank you. Oh, wow, was that awesome? That was awesome. I know every summer when she gets a text or call from me, she's like, oh, no. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm making a big ask of her, and she is always so gracious, and I love the show. says, let me pray about it first. And we were able to have a discussion about what the Lord had already shown me, the ruach, the breath of life, living water, and, and the dry bones of Ezekiel being breathed life into and, and, and reviving an army for the Lord, and that is us. And I'm reminded that our Lord brings us out of the darkness and into the light, into his glorious light, that we might declare his praises. And it is awesome and just a joy to see, you know, when I finally get to see the painting, that really everything my heart was, was thinking and all summer, you know, also the Holy Spirit. So I love that the Spirit worked through both of us, and but she brought it to life and brought it to such a beautiful painting that we can look at, something, an image that we can keep in our mind. And I am just stunned. I love this painting. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing.